Can you tell me who is an entrepreneur? So is the objective of entrepreneur to make money? My friend, I've asked this question from many people. You're probably one of the few who has answered it correctly. There is a risk. The fact that you have a degree doesn't guarantee your success. So are they entrepreneurs? You bet they are. Is that one of the things that, or well, perhaps the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make in business, they think it's all about money, all about making My opinion, money. because that's the way the society has defined it for us. Just like the MBA thing, they said, it's all about making the revenue and the profit. I'm an immigrant from Iran. Uh, I was 16 years old when I came to the United States by myself. When I look at it, I, I've come to the conclusion that it's not me, but all immigrants are entrepreneurs because yeah. they wanted to exchange what they had with something better, knowing that there was a risk. A mother who was divorced, who has two kids, who goes to work every day from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night, and then saves her money to take their kids to have a better food or to go to Disneyland or to go, that woman is an entrepreneur. She exchanges her time, her effort, her soundness, her health, with something that in her mind is of higher value, the happiness of her kids. She is an entrepreneur in my book. And a darn good one at that. And a darn good one at that. Can you tell me who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person who looks at society, they see a need, and they come up with a solution, whether unique or novel, to solve that solution and bring some service or goodwill to their community. And they do so by undertaking all the necessary risks and preparation to bring that vision to life over is, the years. So is on. the objective of entrepreneur to make money? No, that's a byproduct. My friend, I've asked this question from many people. You're probably one of the few who has answered it correctly. Really? An entrepreneur, the definition of an entrepreneur in the, in the 1700s, that's mm -hmm. how the definition was developed. It's mm -hmm. someone who has something, mm -hmm. someone who has something. It could be an idea, it could be a product, it could be his time, who is exchanging it with something of higher value. So I have something, I want to exchange that with something of higher value. And then that definition was altered by, a, uh, by an Irishman 50 years or so later in the mid-1700s. He says, an entrepreneur is somebody who has something, who was to exchange it with something of higher value, knowing that there is risk. Ah, so he added risk. He added risk. He says, I do want to change this with higher value, but there is a risk that it doesn't happen, that it, it may not happen. Yeah. Right? Now, with that definition, think about every student in every college. Mm -hmm. They have something. It's their time, their parents' money, <laughs> their, their <laughs> efforts, staying up all late at night, paying the school. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because they think. They think. They hope mm -hmm. that they can exchange all of that with a better life, something yeah. of higher value. But yeah. there is a risk. The fact that you have a degree doesn't guarantee your success. Mm -hmm. So, are they entrepreneurs? You bet they are. So, if with that definition, if you look at it, what Martin Luther King is an entrepreneur. Mother yeah, Teresa okay. was an entrepreneur. They had something, and they want to exchange it with something better. You have the choice to decide what you want to exchange your ideas, time, effort, creativity with. It's your choice. We're all entrepreneurs. The question is, what do we choose to exchange what we have with? And there's always a risk that it may or may not work. And you have to manage that risk. You have to navigate, navigate that risk. Navigate that risk. Managing means controlling. Navigating means getting through it. You're navigating the risk. Is that one of the things that, or well, perhaps the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make in business? They think it's all about money, all about Making My opinion, money. because that's the way the society has defined it for us. Just like the MBA thing, they said it's all about making the revenue and the profit. So people, people are focused on that. You know, what gets measured gets done. People are focused on yeah. that thing. They're not focused on how the machinery works. It's like 
a car engine. It's not just about the fuel you put it in. There's a lot of mechanical things that happens for the engine to work. If, we, I, if I just say, oh, better fuel, better engine, better fuel, better, it doesn't work. The mechanical pieces that work in a business are based on those five pillars. They have always been based on those five pillars. I'm not, I'm not a genius who threw this out from, you know, I, I didn't sit one day and God came to me and said, hey, you said there's this five. No, it's always been there. What we have done is we have forgotten about it. Good companies are all already doing it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get out of harmony. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get messed up. Yeah. Sometimes the music gets broken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know, you're out of tune. You know, the reason I believe we are where we are in terms of entrepreneurship, I think it's, I think it's part because we glamorize the end results so much and we, we don't appreciate the journey, right? Because if you look at Elon Musk, huge success today. Many people know about him. But I remember one person tweeted him a few years back and asked him about his success. And they said to him that, what did it take? For him to get to where he was and he replied that it took years of disappointment and sadness a lot of hard work but then he added that nobody wanted to hear about that do you believe that entrepreneurship can solve all the problems in the world i do That's with the definition with the definition i gave you with that definition with the definition so i gave you that we all have something, and if we begin, and, and we are every day. You know, people ask me, how do, how, do, how do I know I'm an entrepreneur? How do I practice? How do I get to where you get? I said, start tomorrow morning. Start this afternoon. When you go out to get buy milk or take the kids off the, uh, from school, don't go the same route. Turn right as opposed to left. Stop. Listen to music. Change the channel. Realize that you have choice. Yes, now, it may be a small choice, you'll say, oh, but first you have to realize you have choice. Then you have to realize that change is your friend and it's giving you options to act. Then you have to realize you are indeed exchanging what you have with something different. You have the time, stop, enjoy the sun, enjoy something. Mm -hmm. Spend two more minutes, ten more minutes with the ones that you love. Spend ten more minutes on some idea you want to develop. It's your choice. When you begin to realize that you have something and you don't have to necessarily be Elon Musk, you have something and you're exchanging that something with something better. And as you do that and you realize that you actually can, that you are a player, that you can play the music, that you're an excellent runner, you're Olympic quality winner, mm -hmm. then you begin to exercise and if you do that, if we all do that, if we all exchange what we have with something better, we'll have a phenomenal, phenomenal life. Beautiful. How did you get into entrepreneurship? So I've thought about this actually quite a bit. <laughs> um, uh, and I've come to a conclusion that uh, based on the same thing that I'm saying, I'm, uh, I was saying that it's an exchange uh, idea, that I was trying to exchange what I have with something better. I'm an immigrant from Iran. Uh, I was 16 years old when I came to the United States by myself. Uh -huh. And it has a story of how I came and all that. But when I look at it, I, I've come to the conclusion that it's not me, but all immigrants are entrepreneurs because yeah. they wanted to exchange what they had with something better, knowing that there was a risk. They knew <laughs> that there was a risk. And every one of them, every one of them tries to exchange what they have, where they live, what they do, with something better. And that's why they immigrate. That's why they move. So uh, when, and, and then I've built a number of companies. The first one I was in college and, and, and so forth. But what I have learned, and if you look at my, my history, I'm not a one, one company, one guy, one situation kind of. I like the change. Today, I advise many companies, and I like the fact that from beginning to end of the day, I have seven things to deal with, and they're all different, and they all have different problems and different issues. That keeps me creative. That keeps me going all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's what, what do you have and what do you exchange it with, and that makes you an entrepreneur. Now, 
have I at times exchanged my time and efforts with money? Yes, I have. And I've done well. Mm -hmm. uh, have I exchanged it with something else often? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. We all do it. We all do it. It's the key of recognizing that we're doing it that makes you an entrepreneur. Actually, there was a, there was a Texas A&M study uh, a number of years ago, the University of Texas A&M, that, uh, that looked at the uh, patterns of people, and they figured 500,000 years ago, humans mm -hmm. built this gene. We, we built the gene in, in ourselves mm -hmm. that, that makes us want to evolve in order to avoid dangers and avoid the situations it makes us evolve. That, that gene is the entrepreneur gene. And regardless of if we're black, white, yellow, if we're tall, short, fat, happy, whatever, if we're from big company, you know, from uh, big money, small money, if we're in projects or if we're in the castles, it doesn't matter. We all have it. It's the gene that drives us to thrive. Mm -hmm. To go from surviving to thriving, to look for something better. We are all entrepreneurs, it's in our genes. Now, the, the question that you should ask is, when did you realize you're an entrepreneur? That was my next natural question. When was your first uh, realization that you were an entrepreneur? Uh, with the definition that I had, not, uh, not too long ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, after being an entrepreneur for years. For so many years, right? You I know, didn't realize that I actually, uh, with this definition that I give you, mm -hmm. and the quicker you realize you're an entrepreneur, the better. The better you are. So with that definition, wouldn't that make married people entrepreneurs? Because married they've taken people, Married people or divorced people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, see, with that definition, a mother who was divorced, who has two kids, who goes to work every day from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night and then saves her money to take their kids to have a better food or to go to Disneyland or to go. That woman is an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. She exchanges her time, her effort, her soundness, her health with something that in her mind is of higher value, the happiness of her kids. And she's navigating the risk of knowing that potentially it might not work out as well. Yeah. But she takes she, that on. She risks the not having meeting the right person in her life. She meets she she risks her own happiness. She risks her health of standing on her feet for fourteen hours a day. But she does it. Mm -hmm. She is an entrepreneur in my book. And a darn good one at that. And a darn good one at that. This is beautiful. I can see um the philosopher, as I would put it, coming out in you. I wish more people would think about life the way you think about it. And the reason I say this is because as entrepreneurs, we wake up every morning with uncertainty. We wake up every morning knowing that things need to get done. Whatever it is needs to get done. And it depends on us, regardless of how we feel. But the problem a lot of times is that we focus too much on motivation and the feel good emotion to get going. And I think that's exacerbated because a lot of times we don't realize just how commendable it is what we're doing is. Like a lot of times for a lot of people, let's just use an example that everyone can relate to. You see a nice girl or a guy quite interested in that person, but it scares the living crap out of you to go over and say hi, to exchange numbers potentially and ask them out on that first date. But if you can realize just how much you've achieved in mustering up the courage to go over and introduce yourself while navigating the risk of being rejected. Of course, it's going to hurt if you're rejected, but just to embrace that and acknowledge the growth that comes with it. Now, when you see the next person, you can learn from the previous um, encounter if it was a failure. And if it was a success, hats off to you, you can do the same thing all over again. And eventually, you won't have to be scared because you've grown so much. If we can magnify that growth that we all undergo when we navigate risk, when we try to be more than we are, when we diverge from what's normal and what we're used to and venture into the unknown, there's a lot of um, goodwill and happiness yes. to be gained from that, I think.